Good evening. We are here with Michael for Dead Air Live. We are local folks who come together and do a practice called Interplay. Interplay is a practice through which we play with song, story, with movement, and with stillness. So one of the things we found is that while our sort of dominant capitalist culture here sort of urges us to kind of bring our intensity to everything, if we play more with the stuff that we celebrate, with the stuff that challenges us, whether it's individual or in group or in our global community, we have more resilience, we have more fun, sometimes we find out we're already good enough, and we have more community. So we're inviting you here tonight to be our witnesses as we witness one another as we play and explore. We're just going to do a bunch of the stuff we do. We've never done exactly what we're going to do tonight, um, which is what happens every time we get together. So we invite you to come along. And we're going to start with one of our ABCs, which is a breath and a sigh. Because we hold too much stuff in our bodies, so we do a lot of things to just get a little more space in here. So a breath and a sigh. Ah. And a breath and a roar. Ah. And a breath and a yum, a comforting yum. So we're going to introduce ourselves one at a time into a little group sculpture led by our hands. I'll start. Zizi, Angela, Dorcha, Ginger, Michael, J -j 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 Jason, Diane. So we always start out when we have an interplay session with a little warm up. And so we're just going to take up a little space so we have enough room to spread our arms and not whack each other. And have a breath and a sigh. Ah. Let's reach an arm up, do a little stretch. We go down a little stretch. In fact, anybody out there in witness land, if you want to join us, you are so welcome. Stretch your arms up and spread them out and take up some space. Oh, it's like violate all those codes that say behave yourself. Wrap yourself up in a big hug. Go ahead and roll right over and hang over your legs. Woo, a big breath in the sky. Let some junk fall out of your head. Roll up at your own pace. So we're listening to our bodies, what our bodies want. Uh, our bodies want breath and stretch. Our bodies want affection and affirmation. Our bodies want ease. And make some face or mush your face all around. Right, push it to somebody else. Open up big and wide. Ah! And now we're going to indulge in a little whining because nobody gets to whine enough. Thrusting. Oh, 
正转，老不耍，老是假，哇，哈，哈，呀，你给你进来呀，走，走，呀，呀，好，呀，走，走，哇，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，哈，<laughs> Make a big breath and let that just smooth into a little swing. <sighs> See, we got rid of all kinds of stuff without hurting each other. <sighs> and swing, we just swing through the front of our bodies. <sighs> we swing our voices. <sighs> swing is a very collaborative movement. <sighs> Lots of momentum and ease. Oh, now we're really gonna slow it down and just be like a marionette with one string left, just hanging out. Ugh. Hanging out is just not valued that much in our culture. <sighs> But you have to hang out if you're going to get any inspiration in life. Oh. We'll just move that into a little shape, take a shape. By the way, there's no wrong way to do any of this. Take another shape. Shape is having form, stillness. Take a different shape. Change one thing in your shape. Take a shape that intersects with somebody else's shape. And take a, just a few little incremental changes with your shapes, with each other's shapes. And one of the things we notice is that it's really satisfying to make sound. And just take a breath and let it go with a sigh. So one way to describe interplay also is to say we do stuff and then we notice. So we notice what our experience is and we invite you to notice what yours is. So does anybody have something you're noticing right now? Paying attention to how you feel in your body that you want to share? Energized. Warmed up. Silly. Mm. <laughs> Trying a little too hard. Mm. Good to notice. Mm. Good to notice. Mm. All right, so let's gather up in our semicircle. I'm just going to warm up our sounders a little bit. One of the things we like to do a lot of is leading and following. And kind of based on the idea that if you don't always have to come up with it, you get to go along for the ride, get to enjoy the group experience, and um, then sometimes you get to lead. There's no leadership without followership. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to make a sound and a gesture, and everybody's going to join me. Then somebody else will make an offering, and we'll join them, and we'll do a few of those. And then we will magically find an ending. <laughs> thing I notice is how immensely satisfying these goofy little things are to do. So try it sometime. Mm. Yeah, so take a breath. Ah. 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 
So we're playing a bit tonight with the theme of transitions. So we're going to do um, a little form we called I Could Tell About. In this form, we finish the sentence and, on a subject, but we don't actually go into the story. We just kind of name it. And it's a way to stir up our story pot. So our theme that we're playing with tonight is transitions. And obviously, transitions happen on many, many levels. And we have an easy focus around this. So the idea, let's all ease up our focusers. Mm. Invite you to do this with us. So you just ease up on all those important things you're focusing on so hard and go, wee, wee. So one of the things we notice is that the more we ease up on our focusers, the more we kind of open ourselves up to the beauty and the truth of different cultures and different practices. So we're just going to go around our circle twice saying, I could tell about on the subject of transitions. Yeah. All right, you want to start? I could tell about, you know that time between soup and salad? <laughs> I could tell about not wanting to wake up in the morning and hitting the snooze button many, many times. I could tell about how strange it is to be a new grandmother. <gasps> I could tell about moving to the outer edge of life, the eldest in our family. I could tell about having so much fun playing while walking on the beach in Plum Island. Mm -hmm. I could tell about working to figure out how to make a 12 foot long whale puppet. I could tell about oh, black cats shedding in the spring, lots of fur. So this time we're going to do a round where Diane will do an I could tell about, and then Jason will do an on behalf of dance. Now on behalf of is a practice we have, which is a way of responding to what somebody else has shared. There's no obligation to fix anything. There's no obligation to even understand. What we find is when we move sort of from our human common ground, things happen. I could tell about going from working to retiring. I could tell about feeling like I'm a really different person than I used to be. I could tell about feeling so spacious inside and then walking on Plum Island and feeling the spaciousness inside was all around me too. I could tell about working so hard on a school paper 
and never feeling like it's ever going to get finished and then just giving up and saying enough is enough. I could tell about every summer that we fix our boat by cleaning, steaming, waxing, polishing, preparing. Will we ever launch this year? I could tell about how this time of year I really start hearing my mother's voice who died five years ago but she starts coming to me this time of year. Take a breath. Ah. Does anybody want to share something you notice? So we all got a chance to both tell and to be, have somebody respond to us with an on behalf of and to do an on behalf of somebody else. Hmm. I liked how the themes, the different themes, even though it was all transition, I liked how they were, some of them were kind of you know, intense emotional themes and some of them were much lighter. Mm -hmm. I love being witnessed mm -hmm. uh, non-verbally. What a opportunity to do during my life. And people, it really feel satisfying. Mm -hmm. I might ask permission first. <laughs> I, I loved embodying the idea of the new woman whatever that might be. <laughs> I love the way that Diane pulled out all the work that it took to get me up to that treehouse so I could actually no, stay uh, in it overnight. Uh, <laughs> so it was like, yes, you yeah, really got it. Mm. I like that it's, I don't know what's going to happen. It's completely spontaneous. I don't think anything up. So one of the things we say about the group body and in interplay is that our group body that we create together is elastic enough to hold us, you know, if we're big and loud, if we're broken and angry, and small and tender enough to hold us if, if we're vulnerable. And, and the fact that we can have silly stories and tragic stories and global stories and personal stories all in the same bucket. So we'll take all that, breathe it in and sigh it all out. Ah. Ah. So let's do uh, the walks up front. <clears throat> All right, so this is a, a, sim a basic group form, and we're just gonna start walking in any direction, and we know that our zone is behind here. It's basically, none of us are professional dancers, but we all know how to walk and stop. And then as Jason is showing us, run in whatever way that means for you. So we're going to put on a little music and we're simply going to play with walking, stopping, and running. And just noticing what happens in between our bodies in the space. Battery 100%. Connected to Carolyn King's iPhone. <laughs> 
Sculptures. Great. So now we're going to do some group sculptures based on the idea of transitions. This first one is just going to be a really quick flare. So each of us is going to take a gesture and a, and a word, and we're just going to quickly make a group sculpture based on the theme of transitions in life. So let's get started. Anybody can go first. Oh no! Oh no! Rhubarb! Poison don't eat! Poison don't eat! Oh! Poison don't eat! No! Oh! Type it up! No! Type it up! Type it up! Accept it as it is! Oh! Accept it! Poison don't eat! Oh! No! I don't want to oh. go down there! No! Poison don't eat! It, uh, oh, lots of walking no. from here to there. Except poison don't eat. Oh, oh, lots of walking uh, no. from here to there. Except poison don't eat. It is. Oh, it is I don't want to. Oh. Oh. <laughs> another one for us? Yeah, we'll do another one of those group sculptures based on the idea of transitions. And this time, let's do it where we just use, we'll actually really stick to one word and really quick, fast as we can, we all go out. One word, one at a time, go. Hype! Don't! Okay. Walking. 
Lightning! Paranoia! Stop! <sighs> and based on the idea of transitions now, we'll do a sculpture that transitions. So from here, we'll come out and we'll just use sound and movement. We're all in one group shape. And then after the first shape, we'll then transition one at a time to a different shape to make two group sculptures total. <sighs> <laughs> Chom, chom, chom! And now we transition. And that's our group sculpture practice. Does anyone want to share any noticings about that and the experience? Maybe at home too you're thinking about what you might be noticing or witnessing as you watch at home. There's no transition that doesn't, isn't helped with sound. <laughs> I just find it very um, liberating uh, to not have to deal with words and just have sound. And then to just feel the, the opportunity in the second, you know, like that last one we did where you could have one thing and then you change it. I always felt like I could change it to something much more fun. Mm -hmm. That was nice. I thought it was interesting the different stories that anybody could apply to that sculpture and what could be going on without the words. Doors. Yeah. So we're going to cycle through a couple of other ways that we play with things. Um, so invite somebody to uh, babble for 30, 40 seconds on a subject of transitions. So just step out and go for it. Now we're going to take that one a little further and have an interview. Um, Michael's going to ask three questions. Jason's going to stay with his made-up language, and Angela's going to translate into English. So Jason, how are you handling the transition from spring to June, or spring to summer? <laughs> I'm under a great deal of stress, and the only thing that helps me is riding my bicycle. And Jason, why don't you have any other ways of handling stress all through the day? Cooking is nice. I like cooking, but the bicycle really mellows me out. How mellow are you when you cook and bike? <laughs> Next thing, I need to catch up on my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Big breath and a sigh. Another form we have for playing with our stories is called a DT3, which sounds very obscure. What's that mean, T? It simply means dance, talk, dance, talk, dance, talk. 
So you do each of them three times back and forth. The idea is that when we move our stories, they go to a different place. And we let our words follow instead of having our frontal cortex always leading. All right, so we're going to do a side-by-side -side version. And um, we're each going to do stories that may or may not have anything to do with each other. Okay? okay. The subject of transition. Yeah. Now you're going to so talk. You're, you're going to do a TD3. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm going to move first, and she's going to talk first. I got out my saw and I buzzed through the branches, the dead branches of this tree. So this lady, I was at a memory cafe today and she said, I knew your father. And we realized that he was in a day treatment center that she ran. And that was 10 years ago, and she remembered him. And the branches fell, and I broke them into smaller pieces and smaller pieces, and piled them neatly. So, you know, the conveyor belt? You're coming up in life, and you're a child, and you're an adult, and maybe you have children, and maybe you don't, but you go through this arc, and maybe you have a good career, and maybe you have a shitty career, but you know, you're in the middle of adulthood, and then you begin to get to the other end of the conveyor belt, and you kind of notice that the horizon isn't so far off. came through these empty spaces, creating new places for light. So, it's just about have this moment. This moment, if it's beautiful, if it's painful, if it's scary, if it's patriotic or just brutally oppressive, if it's fair or unfair, just have this moment. So take a big breath. Ah. Do you want to share anything you noticed? I noticed that there were a lot of similarities between what you were saying and that moving those things together just helped them assimilate so much mm. so neatly. Now I felt this kind of comfort in having this story about wood and tree unfolding next to this story about life and death, it just felt yeah reassuring. Mm. Yeah. Oh, so Diane, would you take us through a quick little lead and follow with sound and movement? We're just gonna follow Diane because it's so nice to not make stuff up. So one of the things we notice, and one of the things we kind of talk about in interplay is everything has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And the idea that we can have our stories in sort of containers that have some finite quality to them so they're not just big and all over the place all the time. And one of the things we find in the group body is we start to, like endings, just come up and find us. 
Like what just happened there? So we're going to do a, a group form called the Pittsburgh form. It's a version of a walk, stop, run with leading and following mashed in and with little solo tellings. And everybody has a shot at doing a, a solo telling and there's a telling spot which is right here. A person will come forward, they might do a little three sentence telling, they might sing, they might just have a movement solo, they might do made up language, and as soon as they finish, they're going to start a new gesture and we're all going to follow it with them and then they're going to sit down and become a witness. So one by one, we will do a telling and then we will become witnesses. All right? So take a big breath. Ah. 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 Transitions, transitions in our worlds. So I really, really used to think when I was a kid that I would grow up and I would be all finished. I would be like, like a, a loaf of bread and I would be done. And, you know, you could put your finger on me, the loaf of bread, or you could tap it on the bottom and it'd be all done. So all of these branches I can stack, stack, stack. The heavy wood I stack first, and then the lighter wood on top, and then leaves and soil. And then it all starts to rot pretty quickly and becomes new stuff, new dirt, ready to do things with. My mama put plastic on everything. Everything in her closet was covered with plastic. Why, mama? Why is everything covered with plastic, we asked. Because I save it for the good, she said. She was now 92 years old. Mama, the good is now. Wear it. The good is now. Wear it. Wear, wear, it. wear, it. wear 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 it. If this was a soapbox, I'd stand on it. With the sea levels rising. And I'd shout out to people, if this was a soapbox, we need to get behind the intersectionality of the Green New Deal, justice for jobs, justice for different racial groups, justice for different ethnic and cultural groups, justice for the earth and the creatures. If this was a soapbox, man, I'd have it. <laughs> <laughs> There are eight small children telling me their perceptions of the world as it is. It's beautiful and the chicks are dying and the birds are disappearing and the butterflies, we can't find them anymore. And they're telling me what they think about our beautiful world. And I am listening.
I travel around the world a lot. And sometimes I forget the privilege that I have of being able to do that, to intersect and get to know different cultures and places and values, and just to have the opportunity to understand how similar we all are, even with all of our differences. So I ask my therapist how I can find myself. And she says, let all thoughts, feelings, sensations go. And I feel so spacious without end. And then I go walking with my friend on Plum Island and the spaciousness inside is also connected with the spaciousness outside. Let's all join up. <clears throat> Another breath. Ah. Is there anything you noticed that you'd like to share? Either from your in it part or from being a witness? I noticed that the stories got deeper and deeper, a little more personal. Um, yeah, that's what I noticed. I love the variety of story and how each of us personify the feeling or the, the action differently. I was just aware of, um, as a witness, just feeling sort of tapped into this deep appreciation. Like just, I mean, you guys were the last two. Just watching you up there and just, something about this that just fills me with love. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> no obligation, of course. <laughs> Anybody else? All right, so take a breath. <sighs> so I want to invite us to, on, on, in the notion of a, on behalf of, to just have a um, couple of duets and the trio. We're just going to do a sort of a one-minute hand dance, just in appreciation for what we've been playing with tonight. All right, you can have your own sound in about a minute, and we'll find an ending, and we'll do our closing circle. So three of us can be a trio. Great.
All right, so bring it together. We usually end our time together by um, doing what we call a closing circle. Our circles tonight, we look like a half circle. That's because you are the other half of the circle. Um, so we're just gonna do, um, we're gonna throw in some words and sounds from our time together and we're gonna cook up a little song and then we're gonna find an ending, all right? So throw in words and sounds into our pot. Bake in the bread. Child. Bread. Yeah. Not done. Children. Children. The bread. Bloop. Climate change. Perception. Bloop. Travel. Bloop. We're gonna change. get a little rhythm, Bloop. little tone. Bloop. Thank you, everybody. Hmm. We have four more minutes. They just told us to wrap it up. Oh, they did. Oh, good. Oh, more. Looking for the oh, good. More. Looking for the good. Looking for the good. We're going to do a witness, witness. Looking for the good. Wrap it up. Do you want to wrap it up or? We can wrap it up. Continue? All right. Let's do an add on song. Let's do an add on song. So yep. I'll add on one at a time uh, with some sort of, we'll make a beat. And then we'll add on, and then we'll all drop out one by one, whenever you feel like dropping out. But let's make it longer. We've got some there time. Yeah, we got some time. Mm. All right. Let's let it simmer. Yeah. Cook. We're gonna play with dynamics this time. <laughs> start. Six or seven minutes. <laughs> Six or seven minutes. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Take it up. Boom, 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 boom. Bum 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 Diet. 
So this is a good moment to tune into body data, which is paying attention to what we're actually experiencing in our bodies right now. And so what do you notice? What are you having in your bodies wow. right now? Just a couple of couple of noticings on that. Feeling vibration. Vibration. I echo that. <sighs> Feel lots of freedom and ease. Mm. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we notice is that we, when we actually tune in and then make decisions based on what our bodies are experiencing in life, we get to have a lot more ease. And vibration with one another. I mean, isn't that what humans have been doing together for thousands of years, right? Coming together, drumming, singing, chanting. It's so we can vibrate together, so we can feel our humanity. Mm. And that's what we do. And when you're not th th thinking, because you're not in your brain, I mean, you're not in your frontal lobe or wherever your language is, you're in your body sounding or experiencing and you're in the moment without your thoughts and my thoughts anyway no. <laughs> so thank you for joining us in witness tonight and would you join us with a breath and a sigh a breath and a roar and a breath and a yum If people wanted to do interplay in the area, if they're watching this locally, where would they do that? Well, go to the website interplay.org, but the second and fourth Wednesday evenings in Harvard Square at First Parish is a wonderful group that everybody is welcome to. <coughs> Unitarian Church. First Unitarian first. Church, the one um, <coughs> Church Street. 730 to 9. <laughs> Cambridge, $20. <laughs> Oh, whatever if, you can pay. Yeah, money should never ever keep you away. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Sing for thirty seconds. Sing. <laughs> la 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 la. la, 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 la. Sing a song. Thank you. 